and they said it's called I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And we're like, like yeah, whatever. That's a rubbish stupid name. The, the title will change. The yeah. title will change. They'll change rubbish, the name. Rubbish title. Because quite frankly, I'm not saying that every night. Cut to 20 years later. On the bridge. Every, every, get me out of here! <laughs> so, Ant and Deck, great to be here to chat about your upcoming book, Once Upon a Time. Um, which means, we mean basically we get to chat about your whole career, which is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty incredible. How long have we got? We've got, uh, we've got 30 years to cover here. Okay, so we've basically got like, uh, we'll do a minute a year. Okay, we'll right. take okay. Oh, that's, a good, that's a good way to break it <laughs> down. Good, good. Um, and obviously we're sat at um, a nice intimate distance from each other <laughs> yes. as, as we all come out of lockdown. So um, strange, isn't it? Really weird. So what's it been like for the two of you not seeing each other in person for that long? We've we've worked kind of throughout lockdown, really. We've been doing kind of um, things remotely or for our socials. So we kind of see each other quite a lot. On, on either a screen or, been a um, lot of zoom or, or on a phone. So uh, we've been in contact throughout the whole thing, but it's nice to kind of get back in a room together. Hi. Hi, over there. Hi. <laughs> it's the first time we've ever done an audiobook. So that was really interesting. Um, We're very good at it, I have to say. <laughs> it's just really good. Now, it was really good fun. We were a bit like, how do you do this? And then... Because we're quite open, quite energetic, energetic as people, it was it was weird going in there and just reading the book, and then we couldn't help ourselves. So it went, if you get a copy of it, then you realise that at first it's kind of like us just narrating the book, then we have a laugh with it. So it's like the book, but with more fun. Do you get little ad, ad libs? Oh yeah, you oh do. yeah, there are a few. Yeah, and there's, there's a few outtakes at the end. There's, there's, <laughs> there's, 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 there's quite a few outtakes. There's at quite the a end. few outtakes. Um, but yeah, we did it, you know, with a big perspex screen in between us, and we sat you know, the recommended distances away, so we had to do all that. But it was the first time we were physically in a room together for weeks and weeks, since we finished Saturday Night Takeaway yeah. in, in March. So that was nice to be back together and working again. It was weird when we when we were reading the book, and even writing the book, we were kind of throwing stories back and forth. But when you had the finished book and then you, you were reading it for the audio version, the nostalgia for me really kicked in. We were talking about this the other day, weren't mm. we? Like Saturday, we were talking about Saturday mornings and SMTV and work with Kat Dealey and, and how much fun we had. And we it kind of transported you back to the, to those days of, of kind of being in your 20s, you know, doing the show on a Saturday morning, meeting all the kind of pop stars and celebs of the day and then, you know, being kind of carefree. And it was a really lovely time of our career. There was no real pressure on us and we were kind of finding our feet and learning our craft. And uh, I... I drove home that night after doing the audiobook and I was a bit like I was a bit overwhelmed because it was just such a lovely memory what were your initial reactions to the concept of I'm a celebrity get me out of here what did well, you think when you were pitched that we got pitched the show and we liked the idea of it you know the 10 celebrities going to live in the Australian outback and having to kind of fend for themselves and do and they do like bush took the trials because that the idea for that was there um and they said it's called I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. And we're like, like yeah, whatever. That's a <laughs> rubbish name. <laughs> Honestly, we were like, it's too long. It's it's a bit rubbish. It doesn't the, fit on the, the EPG when you're <laughs> clicking through. When you think through Sky, you can't, yeah, that won't all fit on there. So we're like, and we no. were like, the, the title will change. Yeah. The title will change. They'll change rubbish, the name. Rubbish title. Because like, quite frankly, I'm not saying that every night. Cut to 20 years later. On the bridge. Every, every, get me out of there. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've said it every night. <laughs> and it's kind of stuck, hasn't it? You couldn't, you couldn't think of that show being called anything else. Yeah. Other than I'm sorry, get me out of here. And which um, challenges have grossed you out the most? Like watching which celebs do what has made your stomach turn? Um, mainly, every, mainly the eating trials. Eating trial every year. That is the worst thing. Yeah. Some of the things they've eaten over the years, from eyes to testicles to penises. Just yeah, every e bodily everything. Part you can but imagine. some of them, when they have a bad gag reflex, and like Joe Swash, for example, was really bad, and everything he popped in, oh, he was <laughs> thrown back up. That's very tough to watch. No yeah. matter how many times you see it, when you stood right there, and the worst one is there's a thing called vomit fruit, and it it just smells like sick. It's like they're it's like they're eating sick, and and then they have to turn to us and show an empty mouth, oh. and the vapors are coming across the table. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Have either of you ever been close to actually being sick during any of them? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. I, I, and and being close to kind of really, not fainting, but being really grossed out. Yeah, probably vomiting, actually, when Fatima Whitbread had a cockroach <laughs> stuck up her nose and oh. then just snorted it out and it shot out and scurried back into the bush. You're just like, 
Oh, God. I think I'm going to be sick. TV gold, though, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so moving on to Saturday Night Takeaway, which yes. is obviously like your own show, like something that you get to shape a lot of. Yeah. Um, how do you go about coming up ideas and uh, for it? And, and, you know, what sort of things are you thinking? We want to we get this in there. We're constantly on the lookout for ideas. And we sit down with our production team in the, in the summer now <clears throat> for, the, for the next series show. And we come up with our hit list undercover victims yeah. but constantly looking at ideas and trying to make each other laugh and the team bring on in ideas so we're always kind of molding and shaping and and some ideas don't make that series but they might make the series yeah. after some some ideas are two or three years in the making so it's constantly bubbling and constantly on the go sometimes management of certain celebrities will say absolute no but then you know you kind of work on them and work on them and then maybe next year they're a bit warmer and then by year three it's a yes we've always got a hit list is there anyone on your hit list at the moment that you're... Well, there really is, but we're not, we can't no, say. No, 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 mm. you don't have to say their name, but okay. that you're like, you're really close to getting them. Yes, yes. And you're really... Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. I yes. can see the excitement. <laughs> yes. There are two, there are two we're very, very, very close to. I'm not sure we'll get them both this year, but there are two that we're very, very, very close to one, and they're slightly further away on the other, but yeah, there are, there are two we're very excited about. We do live in constant fear of getting done ourselves, yeah. though. Right. Constantly. So like, any moment. Oh, well, yeah. any set of, if anything's a bit weird, like even today, you're like, you're looking for cameras, just, like, <laughs> there's, you, there's like three. you could have, there's three cameras. <laughs> spotted three and, ha <laughs> ha, and <my> microphones. <laughs> but like, if we came in here today and you were like the interviewer from hell, and like, we'd be like, what? Is this, is this, is this, is this, is this, is this an undercover on us? <laughs> So, but, yeah, we're, we're looking over our shoulders a lot. We've got a lot of people out for us. Yeah. Gordon yeah. Ramsay has sworn revenge. Yeah. James Corden has sworn revenge. Mm. Jeremy Kyle has sworn revenge. We've got a lot of people out for us. Hold on. Who's behind there? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of them, because I feel like James Corden could pull a really good one. You know? Yeah. He's got the resources. Exactly. He does have the resources. The manpower. Yeah. The know-how. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Well, you got it to look forward to, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, constantly looking over our shoulders. Constantly on the run, Ollie. We're constantly on the run. It's not a life. It's not, there's no life. You're on the run. Is there any advice that you would pass on to future presenters out there? Or, you know, do you want to keep that to yourself for a few more years? Oh, yeah, we don't want any competition. <laughs> We're no. giving no advice. Um, no, I, I would just Don't say rehearse. <laughs> don't know your lines. Uh, yeah. Don't get ready for guests when they come on. Yeah, just mm. wing it. Um, no, yeah, I mean... Do, you, do your homework, but ultimately, be yourself. Let your personality shine through and enjoy it. Because if you're enjoying it, the people watching hopefully will enjoy it too. If you're not enjoying it, it will come across. And has there ever been a point where you've stopped enjoying it a bit? Or, or have you always managed to carry that through? Or is it something you have to sort of remind yourself every now and then? Like, actually, let's take a step back. This is really fun. Let's enjoy this. Yeah, yeah. I think... I think Pre me taking a year off work, I think we got into the habit of kind of, you know, you're on a treadmill and you're just kind of doing it. And I think it helps taking time out for both of us to kind of get some perspective on it and just go, God, it's such an amazing job and we're so lucky to do it. Um, and let's just have fun. And we do, you know, we've kind of got a re renewed energy and kind of vigor for it. And in everyday life, um, <clears throat> let's say not in lockdown, two metre times, yeah. Yeah. do you find it weird if you're stood or sat the other way around? Yes. Because we've got... I mean, not... It, it, say in everyday life, we're just we're out playing golf or we get in the car or something. Then there, not really. But if we ever go to do work and we're going to do an interview and we're the other way around, it That's does odd. feel weird now. Do you just sort of look it. over the wrong side? Oh, he's not there. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. But even in the car, we sit that way around. Yeah, we didn't. No, it wasn't intentional. No, we, we just, just did it. Naturally, sit that way. We saw that a lot of the time we naturally find ourselves the right way around. What is your right side? Like? Oh, it's nice. It's lovely. Isn't it? I get to see it. Well, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, some people find it weird as well. Like sometimes mm. if we're out at a restaurant or you know if we've been in a bar or whatever, and we're sat the wrong way around, people come over and we'll go, oh. Wrong yeah. way. <laughs> like, all right, thanks. Do they follow that up with saying Biker Grove in your accent? Yes, that's normally yeah, Biker there. Yeah, Grove. Normally oh, and there. then they, they often say, you cannot see, man, from Biker Grove. That's another yeah, one. That's another that's, one. Yeah. 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 And then they always go, you're much taller in real life. Oh, no, oh, no they don't. They don't. So what, so <laughs> I was going to say, that, that, that one did surprise me there. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They never, they never <laughs> say that. <laughs> we still get called the wrong names. After 30 years of being on the telly and working together, we still I still get, hi, Dad. 
and yeah. he still gets high on. Yeah. So now I just kind of go with it. Yeah. You know. I answer to any. I've been called a lot worse. <laughs> so if it's if it's if it's and, I'd still answer to that. You've dropped in a few stories that we can expect from the book. Uh -huh. Will you finish off by telling us one more little anecdote yes. of your choice that listeners won't have heard before? Um, um, yeah, do you know what I'll tell you about is you you will really get to know the inner workings of me and Deck by the way we both eat a Chinese takeaway. Now this is quite interesting. This is quite interesting, and I think I think most people out there will side with me on this. No, I, I completely disagree. So let me tell you, my way of eating the Chinese is probably like most people out there watching this. You get it, you get the takeaway, you open the bag, get your plate, you put bits of everything on mm. your plate, you sit down, press play on the movie, and you eat. Yes. Absolute savage. Right? Oof, now, I don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> well, obviously... Now, the take, sociopath over here you eats take it differently. everything out, you get all your main courses... You put them in the oven or the warm and draw if you're what? warm and draw. Well, I've got a warm and draw, or you put them in the oven at a very very low heat just to keep them warm whilst you eat your starters. So you have a prawn toast, a spring roll, a spare rib, maybe a little chicken satay, a little bit of seaweed, a bit of sweet chili sauce, and you eat your starters. Then you come back after that, maybe have a pancake with some duck in it. A little bit of cucumber, spring, spring But it's onion. not a restaurant. Like, just whack it all on the plate and just get it down here. I mean, this is how I would eat in a restaurant. Yes, Don't get you me see? Wrong. But you can I have a restaurant, restaurant experience at home. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you not? I'm Do guessing you're not what you're not watching the telly at the same time. No, you're well, well. Candlelit dinner. There's and... no movie being watched on the night when you eat the Chinese with him, believe me. Because it's midnight and you're, by the time he's finished... I, wonderful. So I've got to say, it, Deck, it, it I, does I feel, it does sum up it, it, our hmm. two different personalities very well, very well. I think. I do feel like I mean I would be curious to know, but I feel like more of the population might side with that. Mm. I think you're yeah, I think you're underestimating the great British public. <laughs> I think you've underestimated them. <laughs> I do. We'll have to wait and see, won't we? We will. I think I think we'll run a poll on social media. <laughs> I look forward to it. Um, well, thank you so much. It was great to chat to you, and I'm super excited for the book to be out there and thank for everyone you. to listen and read. Thank you. Hope Lo you enjoy it. Yeah, lovely chatting with you.